Hey guys, Patrick here in Fort Worth, and I was over here looking at my various quarries in this tank, and it got me thinking, and um, I was thinking about how there's a lot of stuff online. People hear, but they never question. They never take the time to, to test out for themselves. And so you'll have a lot of information that's just, frankly, wrong. Um, and what got me thinking about this was, first off, I've got, I've got Corey's in this tank. I've got a video where I set up this tank. Um, uh, it's just like, uh, it used to be rainwater, now I'm using tap water. Um, but it's a 60-gallon uh, cube tank. And I've got some various Corey's in here. And if you look, you'll see they've got some nice, regular, healthy whiskers. Let's see if we can get some others. They were all in the front here before. Oh, we've got a panda on the, on the rock there. All right, you see the whiskers on that bad boy? And again, these guys have been in here for a while. Um, it's the albinos back here. I've got Sturbi in here as well, different places. Um, pandas are my favorite. I love pandas. But anyway, so on the bottom of this tank is medium grit black blasting sand. And you'll see people and they'll say, oh, Corys, you can only do sand with Corys. They'll mess up their whiskers, things like that. Right? And, and, and there are substrates that will mess up a Corys whiskers. Um, but as you can see, this medium grit Black blasting sand is uh, just fine with them. Okay, yeah. Now, a few other ones. Uh, this tank right here, it's 60 gallon. It's got a sump, and once a month, there's the stir bite right there. And once a month, I do a 90% plus water change on this tank. Okay. And you'll see people online and they're just, you know, oh my gosh, don't change that much water, you know. In the description, I'm going to put links in for some articles that were written um, uh, in the Tropical Fish Hobbyist magazine about just the, the benefits of large, regular water changes. Because what happens is if you do like 25% once a month, well, you do 25%, so you have 75% of the old water. Well, in the next month, when you do 25% again, you're doing 25% of the 75% old water and 25% new water that's already in that tank. So you wind up with like 20 or 15, the numbers are in the article, but it's not a full 25% water change that you're doing the next month, you know? Or even like a week, even if you do it once a week. Like in four weeks, you're still not changing 100% of the water. You know, whereas if at one time you change 90 to 100% of the water, you are really changing all of that water, all that percentage. You know, you don't have to worry about it. So anyway, I'll have some links. They're real interesting. Another one I get a lot is um, people say, when you are cleaning your, your filter, your, your filter pad or something, you need to clean it with tank water, right? Uh, tap water is going to kill your beneficial bacteria. Listen. No, it's not. It's not. There's no scientific study that you're going to find that says that tap water, even with the chlorines and chloramines, is going to kill enough beneficial bacteria colony on your filter pad to make a difference. In fact, with somebody I know, I won't name a name, but they've been published in TFK and stuff, and I was talking to them at an event, and, uh, and they said this was one of the things, and they don't talk about it because they don't want to stir the, the pot. I don't mind it, stirring the pot. But he talks about how he was uh, with a... A uh, chemist at uh, a uh, water facility, and there was also a, a fish hobbyist, and they were able to go, and then on a filter pad, uh, able to go look at the bacteria colony, rinse it off with tap water, and then look at it again and see that it didn't kill any of them. They were they were all just fine. So you know what? If you got a filter pad, it's dirty. Take it to the tap water. Take it to the hose. Rinse that thing off. You're gonna get rid of more beneficial bacteria just by rinsing the gunk off than you are actually like going and using tap water to clean it. Okay? 
that's how the colony is going to get uh, smaller is when you rinse all that gunk off, which is fine because it'll grow back pretty well. It's not like you're changing all the gravel or anything. You know, on every surface area you have uh, beneficial bacteria that's colonizing your tank. So don't worry about that. Um, uh, oh, uh, back on the big water changes. So the best way to do big water changes to make sure you are changing it out with water that is um, dechlorinated. So chlorine chloramines, I like to use uh, safe, prime is good as well. Um, but it's dechlorinated. It is degassed, so you have it splashing in. Uh, it's properly aerated. Uh, it's the right water parameters and, um, and, and right temperature, okay? So temperature that uh, you can go, you know, five, six degrees cooler, but you know, a lot of these fish uh, in the wild, they have these rain, uh, rainstorms come in and just fill the water and that actually change, alters the pH more. Even during the day, the pH is altered. So people don't realize that. It's not as stable as people think in the wild. Um, you take the pH level of a lake, P, uh, pH values of a lake in the morning and then you take them in the evening and they're going to be quite a bit different. Uh, you have a lot of plants that are performing um, photosynthesis during the day and then the opposite in the evening. So, and they're letting out CO2 and dropping the pH at night. Uh, so the, the fish can, they, they, yeah, they, they're, they're fine. It's just as long as you're, you know, doing these big regular water changes. That's what they love. And when you're doing the big water changes, I like to go and I like to have a separate container that I keep the water in. I've shown this on other videos, but this is a brute trash can. Okay. I've got a pump. I've got air stone in it. So I have a pump in air. I've got uh, a, um, a pump in it itself so I can just plug it in and then take this hose and bring it wherever I want for a water change, fill it up. It stays room temperature, right? So it's a bit cooler than some of the tanks with the heaters, tanks without heaters. A lot of my tanks don't have heaters. If you're keeping your house at like 72, 74 degrees, you don't need uh, necessarily for most of your fish, you don't need a heater. I mean, unless you're keeping like discus, rams, um, the stir by quarries, things like that, things that like a higher temperature. Um, but if you're not keeping stuff like that, angelfish, you know, but if you're not keeping stuff like that, then really uh, you can get by with most fish at like 72 or and above. Um, so, but yeah, I've got a water pump and then I just pump this water into it. Another one I hear often is that when you're moving a tank, save as much water as you can. Okay, D don't... Don't do that. I mean, unless uh, anything, any advice I'm giving you here, this is for fresh water. I don't know about salt water. All right, salt water, you might actually want to save the water. But for fresh water, don't. You don't need to save a bunch of the water, okay? Um, you net out your fish. You bag up the fish. Uh, keep your filter media, maybe your substrate. If you're going to reuse a substrate, keep that, you know, moist. Um, but other than that, you bag up the fish, you keep that moist, you move it, move the tank, empty, uh, get to your new place, uh, set up the tank in the stand, put your substrate in, your plants back in if you had to uproot them, put them somewhere and then do that. And then uh, fill up your tank, treat it, make sure it's aerated, proper temperature, and then go ahead and if the, uh, if the, the parameters are too far off, just do a drip acclimate. Just do a drip acclimate. Uh, the, the parameters might, you know, be uh, around the same anyway. So you can do a regular acclimation where you add just a little bit of water at a time uh, until you get rid of it. Um, I like to drip acclimate anyway just because I don't want to keep that old water that they were transported in. And I've been moving several fish uh, from Texas to, to Florida, driving from Texas to Florida. You know, they're bagged up for like two days. Um, do I save all that water? No, I'm not going to save all that water. So no, don't save your water. Don't, you don't need to save your water. You're doing a fresh water tank. The, the, even if the, the parameters are a bit off, just do a drip acclimation, okay? So in conclusion, medium grit. Corey's whiskers are fine. Not a problem. Big water changes, really beneficial. They love it. Cleaning your filter pad, you can use tap water. You're fine, okay? And, um, and then, uh, and big water changes um, with appropriate water. Uh, you're, you're gonna, you know, 90 plus percent. Yeah, do it. it it'll be great for, for your fish. All right, guys, take care.